Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 5 of this series, Learning C++ by Making Games. In this lesson, we'll cover what is a variable. This lesson has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Nemian Games. In this video, we'll cover what are variables, we'll go over the primitive or built-in variable types, and we'll discuss other options you have with these variables. So first, before we get into what exactly variables are, we have to think about where the data in our programs are stored. And they're stored in our random access memory, or RAM. And if we think about RAM like storage, so we have this image here. Okay, that image is a bit too cheery for computers, so let's get rid of that. Okay, this is a bit more accurate, a little bit more dreary. So if we think about each of these storage units as being a spot where we can store data from our programs, each one of these units is going to have an address. And these addresses are things that, you know, instead of having to know we're storing somebody's name in unit zero or one zero zero one, we can just say name, and then we can think about 1001 here on the right only as being a name. Or if you want to store age, say in 1003, we don't have to call 1003, we can think of it as age. And by using these names, name, age, gender, things like that, for storing data, we don't have to think about what the actual address in memory is. So a variable is just something we are storing in memory and it's stored at a particular address and fortunately for us we don't have to worry about what that address is now there are some things we can do that will impact upon that but that is advanced stuff and we'll talk about that way way down the line so there are different types of data that we can store in our memory and they come broadly in three categories we have our primitive or primary types these are built into C and C++. We have our derived types. These are made up of other variables or reference other variables. So again, we'll talk about these more when we get into Hangman. And these are the type of variables I was talking about in the pseudocode a couple of videos back. Finally, we have user-defined ones. We have a nice little graph here. So you can see a list of our primary ones, our derived ones, and our user-defined ones. And we'll talk about the primary ones moving forward. As the series goes on, we'll get into derived and user-defined ones. So our first primitive or primary type is a bool or boolean variable. A bool is a simple, true, false, on, off, one, zero variable. So if you ever heard of boolean logic, this is that sort of yes, no tree we think about when we look at a boolean logic tree. And if you've done my RTS tutorial, you've seen a lot of Boolean logic used throughout. So Boolean logic is a simple tool that allows us to set a, is this true or is this false? If this is true, then do X. If it's false, then do Y system. It is often used in if then statements. Next, we have int or integers. Integers are just that, whole numbers. So for those of you who don't remember, these are numbers without decimals, so one, two, three, 896, 666, negative 24 are all integers. And given for my example, you can see they can either be positive or negative. We can also make it so they can only be positive. And we'll talk about that at the tail end of this video. Now the length that can be stored is based on the compiler. Typically, and I do stress typically, it's either four bits on a 32-bit compiler or a 32-bit system, or 8 bits on a 64-bit system. I believe, and I could be wrong on this, that the GNU compilers, even on 64 bits, still use uh, a 4-byte system instead of the 8 bytes. Next, we have floats or doubles. And we're going to talk about them together because, well, you'll see why in a moment. A float, otherwise known as a floating point number, or a double floating point number, is a number that includes a decimal. So the float is the decimal. It's floating in the number. So 3.14 pi is a floating point number. A double is a float that holds, well, double 
the number of digits of a standard float. So it is literally a double is literally double float. And again, the size of this number and what we can store in a float or a double depends upon the compiler and system. Next, we have char or character. A character is a single letter like A, B, Z or Z if you're uh, Canadian or British. These are not full words. The, a full word would be a string. And while strings are part of the C library, they're not built in. So you have to call a special header for that. And we'll talk about that when we do hangman. You can also create strings by using a derived variable type, either a vector or an array to get full words. And again, we'll talk about that as well later in the series. And here is just a chart of the size in bytes and the range of data that can be stored inside of the various types. Now, I got this from a 64-bit system running Visual Studio using size of. So this isn't from the GNU compiler. So I, you might get different variable sizes or ranges based on whatever system you're using and which compiler you're using. And in the next video, I'll talk about how you can get this information. And you notice I have a, a special one at the bottom called void, and we'll talk about what void is down the road. It's just an empty variable type. But beyond that, we'll go into more details later on. Now you have some options you can do with your variables. You can combine variables and we'll do this throughout the series, especially as things go, go on. We can have signed or unsigned variables. We can have constants or long or short versions of our variables. So let's explore each one of these in some brief detail. So combining, this is just like algebra from your secondary or primary or whatever schooling you did your algebra in. We can have A is equal to B times C. We can have A is equal to B plus C. It can be minus, it can be divide. In fact, we can use any mathematical operator and there will be other operators than what's currently listed on your screen that we talk about in a few videos. So any of the standard math operators can be used to combine, uh, combine them. You can make variables dynamic this way and Right now, for best practice, try to stay within the same variable types. So I mean, if you're doing some math with this, if you're using an integer, try only to combine with integers. If you're using floats, try to only combine with floats. Yes, you can combine ints and floats together, but there are special things you have to consider. And we'll go into that sort of detail and what you need to do for that later on. Next, we have signed versus unsigned. And all this is is saying that a signed is a positive through negative number and an unsigned is a positive only number, including zero. By default, most compilers assume a variable is signed. So typically, you don't need to declare a variable to be signed. And this might be useful if you want to have extremely large positive numbers and know there won't be and know there will not be any negative numbers in what you are working on. Next, we have const or constant. A constant is a variable that does not change over time. So it is always going to be whatever you declare and initialize it as. And you have to, when you have a constant declare, and we'll talk about what declaration versus initialization is in the next video, but you have to declare and initialize the variable at the same time if it's a constant. So you can't say we're going to need space for this constant and then give it a value later on. You have to give it a name and a value at the same time. Next, we have long and short. And these two are, are fairly easy. They do literally what their names sound like. If you have a long, you are giving extra bytes to storage. So you can store larger numbers there. And it is best to use this when there's a chance the value you're using will be too big for your variable type. Now, short is the opposite of that. It takes up less space in memory and thus you can store smaller values there. When I say smaller, I don't mean like negative values. I mean, in terms of the number of digits you are storing. And I gotta say, because memory is cheap this day and age and fairly common and we don't have you know systems of very little memory, I can't think of a good time to actually use a short. So if you're targeting older systems with less RAM, then yeah, maybe you want to use a short, but I honestly can't think of a, a, a point to. And here you can see our different modifiers and which variable types they relate to. 
And what might be interesting is you see that we have signed and unsigned with character there. And while you can do that, it is you should only use sign or unsigned if you intend to store numerical values in char sized or character sized variables. So typically you won't see this, but this is the sort of combination you can get into. And any one of these can be made a constant. And as you can see, you can combine some of them, such as signed and long can be prefixes to, um, sorry, signed and unsigned can be prefixes to long and short. There are some options there even, so you can mix and match. All right, that said, that covers everything we need to do in this video. In the next video, we'll talk about what declaration and initialization are, and we'll go over the different options that you have for declaring and initializing your variables. That said, if you've enjoyed this series, go ahead and hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel out. And if you wanna make sure you're here when the next video is released, go ahead and hit that subscribe and notify icon. Also, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. It really also does help this channel out. And finally, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.